Today we're going to talk about the clarity of diamonds. Um, out of the four C's of diamond quality being color, clarity, cut, and carat weight, clarity is probably the most misunderstood term. So the clarity of a diamond describes the natural imperfections referred to as inclusions or blemishes in a diamond. There's different grades of clarity which depend on a number of factors, um, the size of the inclusion, the position, um, how dark or light it is, which is the relief of the inclusion. Um, while it's not necessary to have a totally flawless diamond, it is important to have one that would be clean to the eye of most imperfections and without any hazy or milky appearance. Um, most of our clients are happy with diamonds that are in either the VS or SI range. So I'm gonna go through this chart with you here and explain to you what some of those numbers and letters mean. So this is the clarity scale. Um, we work with anything in the SI range and above. So SI being slightly included, um, there's SI1 and SI2, and then VS1 and VS2 being very slightly included, and then VVS, which would be a much more um, rare uh, clarity grade for a diamond. Uh, but majority of the diamonds that we work with would be probably like VVS2 to SI2. So like I said, clarity is not exactly, you know, how sparkly or shiny the diamond would be, but physically the number of inclusions that are in the diamond and their location, their color, um, are they in the top of the diamond, in the bottom, all of those factors play a role in the actual clarity grade. And one thing to note about clarity is that they, uh, that element is graded under a microscope. So how large the inclusions look, what color they are, how visible they are under magnification determines its clarity grade. So color of a diamond is graded to the eye um, and then the clarity is under a microscope. So how visible those inclusions are would determine the clarity grade. So I use these two diamonds as an example here and I'll tell you the clarity grades of these, but I'm sure just by looking at this video, you know, they both look really beautiful. They're really sparkly. If you see any difference here, it's not because you're noticing a difference in the clarity, but more um, maybe a color difference. Um, they're, they're both actually triple excellent cuts. So they have great sparkle. Um, but the diamond um, in my right hand, so on your left side, this is actually a VS1 clarity diamond. And I'm gonna show you the GI certificates for these two so you can see what a VS1 report looks like versus um, something a little bit lower, like in the SI range. So the diamond that I had next to it is actually an SI2 clarity diamond. So um, seeing them side by side, they're both cut beautifully, they're white and bright, but internally in this stone, there are more inclusions. Um, like I said before about the relief of the stone being like the, the color of the inclusions, some SI2 diamonds can have inclusions that are black um, or, or dark, like gray colored, um, and those would be more easily detected. So the SI2 diamonds that we have um, do not have any of those dark inclusions. So the position of an inclusion is extremely important. So if there's an inclusion right in the center of the diamond, um, that auto automatically makes it more visible, whereas an inclusion closer to the side of the diamond would raise the clarity grade higher, um, depending on how easy it is to see without magnification. So the first report here I'm gonna show you is for that VS1 diamond that I had. So this area here on a GI certificate is called the plot, and this shows you exactly where the inclusions are located in the diamond. So this one has um, one very small crystal, in, in the top and then there's some inclusions in the bottom but these inclusions are clear or white and they kind of blend with the facets and they're very very hard to see so a vs1 diamond would be extremely challenging for um you know the average person to detect even under a loop or, or a microscope even for us sometimes vs1 can be challenging to grade because these inclusions are so so small so um like I was saying, the location of the inclusion, where this one is kind of in the center but off to the side, if that inclusion there, that crystal, were kind of dead center and then easily picked up under a microscope, maybe this would have been graded like VS1, but um, in general, this diamond has a very small amount of inclusions and they, the inclusions themselves are also very tiny. So this is a very beautiful and very clean and crisp um, VS1 diamond. 
So I'm just gonna quickly show you the comparison of the two certificates. So this is the VS1 we just looked at, and then this certificate here is the plot for the SI2 diamond that we showed in comparison. So when you're looking at these next to each other, this can be um, kind of scary because you're seeing a whole bunch more um, inclusion. Some of them are larger, maybe more centralized. There's a few um, in the bottom as well. So. This is an example of what an SI2 certificate can look like. When you saw these diamonds next to each other without knowing um, that there was this amount of inclusions or the location, it was really very hard to tell the difference. Um, and that is because the, the kind of diamonds that we carry have these sort of inclusions, but they can be white or clear and blend with the facets. So they're not easily detected without a microscope. So that's kind of one of our specialties is carrying these eye clean SI2 diamonds. So a lot of our clients will, you know, be, be shopping and, and looking and maybe even exploring on, on different websites and getting a gauge for pricing. And they'll say, you know, there's an SI2 diamond I saw online and it's about $1,500 less or maybe even more, $2,000 less. There's a very good reason for that. So I'm gonna move this one out of the way and bring the diamond back out to show you. Um, this is a very eye clean SI1. So an ideal SI, I'm sorry, SI2. Um, this is an ideal SI2 because although there are this many inclusions, they're not easily visible. Um, this whole section here on the plot where it shows this like collection of inclusions and there's a little cluster of them there and here. Um, if, a, if a diamond is shown you know, online or something and it's so much less expensive, the reason being is that maybe these are more visible. Maybe these inclusions are darker and they're reflecting throughout the diamond, making it appear like it has even more inclusions. Or maybe you know this uh, feather right in the center where one of the needles are going to be more prominent and take away from the beauty of the stone and be you know distracting so that is um there are si2 diamonds that exist that have you know more uh, visible inclusions we don't carry those so um our si diamonds like this beautiful si2 it's eye clean so internally these inclusions exist but they cannot be seen to the naked eye so one of the more common questions that we get about clarity is how low can I go without it being visible or you know how far down can I sacrifice on the clarity and, and you won't be able to tell and the truth is I mean we have very different recommendations and different answers for that so there's about 30 different kinds of inclusions from internal mineral crystals feathers needles clouds um, all different kinds of external imperfections um, they come in every shape every color and therefore each diamond is as individual as a fingerprint so really no two are the same but besides that um, we have different quality recommendations for different shapes so i chose um, these two specifically so this is an oval diamond here and then um, an emerald cut here um, one of the last videos we did did a full breakdown on the shapes and you know major differences between these two the oval being a brilliant cut stone and then the emerald cut being a step cut diamond so the emerald cut is going to be like more you know transparent the facet pattern is more like parallel lines so you can really see into the stone whereas the oval is going to be a brilliant cut the facets are more blended this is a brilliant cut diamond so in that respect um very different quality options will work for, for these diamonds. So because this is a brilliant cut, you can kind of go down lower on the clarity as long as it's you know thoroughly inspected and it doesn't have any of those dark inclusions or anything large that's gonna make the stone look cloudy or hazy. Um, when we're looking back at our chart over here for an oval, generally with Lauren B diamonds, um, we can work even down to SI1 and SI2 and you will be in good hands. Um, for the emerald cut, because it is so transparent and you can really see into it, it's really important to have a higher clarity grade here. Um, the trade-off with that, um, with an emerald cut, is that they don't show their color as well, so you can generally sacrifice a little bit on the color of the stone, and it'll still look really white and bright, but um, it's very important to purchase something with higher clarity. So our minimum is typically v, VS2. There are some SI1 um, emeralds cuts that uh, exist and the inclusions are, are hard to see, but generally um, we start at VS2 
for an emerald cut. So just for reference, the oval that I'm showing you is an SI2 Clarity Stone. And then they're both the same color, actually. Yeah, they're, they're both H color. Um, this is an SI2, and then the emerald cut is a VS1. So super clean, no visible inclusions. You can really see right into it. So that's pretty important. Um, so at Lauren V, we, we always take the time to clearly explain the difference and the meaning between these clarity grades and how they are applied to the stones that we're working with. And there's a lot of tips and, and tricks to choosing well-balanced stones that are bright and beautiful and going to sparkle well. So um, we will help you make a very well-informed decision when you come in to select your diamond. So if you have any questions or you want to make an appointment to come in for a diamond consultation, feel free to email us at info at Thanks for watching.